You know, sometimes we just have to get down to the basics. And today's video is one of those basics, which is all about debugging. Now I have been integrating my current hardware project and I found that apart from designing and building, I'm spending a lot of time, if not equal amount of time in testing and debugging. And that's why in today's video, we will be talking about one type of debugging, which is using the simple print statements. So to get started, we will start with the simplest firmware possible, which is the blinking firmware on an Arduino compatible dev board. And we will blink the LED every two seconds. So to get started, we have a folder and inside the folder, we have the blinky ino file, the make file to upload the code into the microcontroller and some notes where we will write down some stuff about the debugging. And this is how the Blinky firmware looks like. Inside the make file, I am using the tool called Arduino CLI to compile it and then upload it to the specified port as well as the board. In this case, the port will be automatically detected and the board is the Arduino M0. So let's try it out. I'll simply press make. And notice that it is taking up about 11,600 bytes. So let's note it down. And it's taking about this number of bytes. And before proceeding, why don't we just do a git init, add a message, which is initial blinky firmware. So now that we have created the simplest firmware, of course, it can be more complex. Let's start adding in those simple print statements. In the context of Arduino firmware, we will be simply adding in serial.print or println. Now there are a few ways of referring to the USB CDC name, and it depends on the type of Arduino board. And because I'm using Arduino zero, I will have to refer to serial USB instead of serial. So let's first start with serial serial.begin or rather in this case it will always be serial USB 9600 and I will halt the serial until the serial monitor starts and finally I will just print start blinking and after this is done I will again use the serial prints to simply say LED on and then once again LED off let's try to flash it in this time we see that the number of bytes the size of the total program has increased slightly it is about 1900 bytes. And when we connect to the serial monitor, yep, we should be seeing start blinking LED on and off. Now, if you really want to turn off these debug statements that we wrote here, all we need to do is just comment it off. And now when we compile the firmware again, we will see that it is 11,600, which is exactly the same as our initial program size right here with the initial firmware with no print statements. So let me come back to the code. And if I want to re-enable the debug statements, I will have to uncomment it. Well, that took a little bit of effort. Nevertheless, let me go ahead and commit this as well. So you see the tiny challenge here. Imagine that you have many, many debug statements. You will have to go and comment each one of them on and off. That takes a lot of time. We can do it in a little bit better way. We can do this simply by adding a define called debug. And now with conditional statements, so if defined debug, we will initialize the serial. We will even print it and we will end if. Why don't we also enclose the other print statements with these uh, conditional? I am going to add the end if. Okay, so why don't we compile this code? Let's do a make. And this time it is still 11,900 bytes. And when we come to the serial monitor, yep, we can still see the statements. Now, instead of trying to search for all the places where to comment off the debug statements, we all need to do is comment off the first line. And now when we come and compile it, it will still be the exact same bytes. Now you might be wondering why are the file sizes still being the same? Well, that's because comments are normally stripped out during pre-processing. So the compiler itself never sees them at all. So the compiled code is exactly the same. And even when we used a standard C preprocessor, for example, the conditionals that we use if def or even defined, if we actually see the, the definition of the preprocessor, we will see that it is used automatically by the compiler compiler to transform your program before the compilation. So can we improve this code further? Well, yes, we can with a help of hash defined once again, but this time we will be giving a definition to a separate print function that we will define. 
So instead of defining it right here uh, throughout the code and repeating it, let's do it just once and for all. So I'm just going to come right at the top. So if debug is defined, I'm going to create a function called debug print and pass in an argument X and it will be simply serial USB print ln and it will also use the same X argument. We should also define an else in case the debug is not defined. And in this case, it will simply be just debug print. In fact, you see that the text editor is making this a little bit less defined than the other text. And notice what happens when I comment this debug. This line is instead becoming less defined. So let me turn back the comments. And instead of so many sentences like if defined, we can delete them and just say debug print and just say LED on here. And we can use the same function. And once again, remove all these lines and say debug print LED off. So now with the debug flag enabled. Let's go and compile the code. Oops, I definitely missed a hash define here, of course. So let's go and compile the code. And when we do that, it is once again the same number of bytes. So add define function. It is still 11,900 bytes. So let's see what happens when we disable the debug. So in this case, it's really simple. We'll just comment the first line and notice that this will get slightly washed out and this will get enabled. And when I compile the code now, it is back to the original size. So yep, it is still 11,600 without the debug. So let me enable the debug and quickly git commit it. Now that we have actually defined a function, the next question is that, hey, you know, why just print out the variable? Maybe we can add in more important information. So in this case, let's uh, go ahead and add this thing called millis, which will return the number of milliseconds passed since the Arduino program began. And this could be a useful timer in terms of debugging statements. So what we can do is we can put a slash and then we can simply print a uh, serial print it again, but this time we will do Millis. And then next line, we will simply put a colon just to make it a little bit more readable. Now, apart from Millis, we can add in more information such as the standard predefined macros and things like the file name, the line, or even the function could come in really handy. So why don't we add in the function and we will once again prettify it and call it function in. And this time, let's also add in the file. And finally, let's add in the line. So line also is available. And finally, we will just give it a little bit of space. And then we will uh, actually print out the variable. So these should not be print ln. So let me just change to print except for the last one. So let's compile it one more time, 12,300. Let's note it down. And now when we come to the serial monitor, yep, you can see the millis being uh, noted. And then in the function, in the file name with the full path, line number, and then LED on and off. Now this is a very, very useful information, especially for debugging purpose. Now, even though it is doing so many things in the debug statement now, we can still just comment the first line and have it entirely turned off. Notice how this entire branch is now de-emphasized. And now when we compile the code, hey, guess what? It is back to 11,600. So we can note it here again. So I'm going to re-enable it. And yep, the else branch is now de-emphasized. And let's git commit it. Now, the next obvious thing is that, well, the debug portion of the code in that single file is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So can we do something more to kind of refactor the code? Yep, we can abstract away the entire debug code into a separate file, which is the header file. So for this, all we need to do is add a file called debugutils.h. And let's cut away this entire portion of debugging into the header file. And of course, after defining the debug, we also need to include this header file now. Shall we compile it? Well, it's no surprise that it is exactly the same uh, size as the previous step. And that's because all we are doing is adding a header file. And when we connect to the serial monitor, it is also giving the same debug information. Even though this code is now abstracted away to a separate debug file and it is printing so many things, the simplicity is still the same. We can just comment the first line to disable debug. And now when we compile the code, hey, guess what? It is still 11,680 bytes, which is exactly the same as how we have been toggling off the debug and the very first initial version of our firmware. 
somewhere. So I'm going to turn on the debug and let's commit the code as add header file. Now, you know, whenever I write so much code, let's say as a part of a library or a header file, my immediate question before actually writing it is, are there similar libraries out there? Well, in this case, there are debug libraries out there, especially in the domain of Arduino firmware. In fact, the term debug utils is pretty common and standard in the industry. If we go and search in GitHub, we will find, let's say, among the Arduino libraries, Arduino debug utils, which we can use, or let's go through some of them. Let's say sensors IoT. This is actually by Andrew Spice. I learned a lot from him. And when we go and peek into his header file, we will see that he has used the debug in a slightly different way. He has put the debug as part of levels one, two, three, and it basically goes more and more verbose. So it depends on how you want to define your debug utils. So you can definitely use the Arduino, the native Arduino library, which is Arduino debug utils, or let's search for another one. So I'm going to use the Arduino CLI and then simply search for debug. Now, since the results will be a lot for the screen, so I'm just going to grab them by name. And look, there are already so many debug libraries that we can use in the domain of Arduino firmware. Now I have been using this one. So let's try out this Arduino trace library. So let me first install it. And if we visit the GitHub repository, the author has a pretty comprehensive uh, readme file. And here we can see how it appears. We can simply use dump some value or simply trace. And hey, look, it's something similar to what we have done. So this is a common pattern in debugging statements. So why don't we use, uh, okay, in our case, it will be dump variable. So let's go ahead and use the dump variable. But since the time of the millis function is missing, we will keep that. And one more thing, we need to use the Arduino trace serial for our case because we will be using serial USB instead of serial. So after the debug, let me define the USB serial as serial USB. And then simply I will add on Arduino trace library. And now inside the debug utils, it will become a lot simpler. I can delete away these entire line and simply say dump and then X. Notice how much simpler a file became because we incorporated a library. And when I connect to the serial monitor, you'll see start blinking will also have more information along with LED on and LED off. Now, despite doing so many changes, having a header file or even incorporating a library, all we need to do to toggle off or disable the debug is simply comment it. And now when we compile, hey, guess what? It is back to 11,600. So we can make the same note here. So I'm going to re-enable the debug and simply commit it to the git as add library. Now, just one more step, because we have incorporated a library, we can now go ahead and add a little bit more functions just other than the one that we have defined so that our debugging becomes more dynamic. In our case, if you look at Arduino trace, we will see two main functions. One is trace without any variable as the argument and the other one is dump, which we are already using. So why don't we use trace as well? So to do that, let's define the trace and we'll call it simply debug trace. And now inside the header file, we can go ahead and define one more time, but in this case, it will be define trace and we will use the trace function from Arduino trace library without any arguments. This one should not have an argument as well. Sorry, I have to add in debug trace here as well. And now it should work. One last time, make. And guess what? It is still back to the same old size. So we can make a note here. It is still 11,680 bytes, which is exactly the same as our initial Blinky firmware without a single debug statement. So I'm going to re-enable our toggle on the debug and do a final git commit. Now, when we look at the git log list, we can see that we started with the initial Blinky firmware. We put in some print statements and some if defined conditionals along with def definition. And then we started defining the function, adding more info, header file, or even adding the Arduino trace library and more function from the library. But despite having all these steps, our file size, when we turn off the debug flag is still the same as the initial one. And that too, with the simplicity of turning on and off the debug flag by commenting on or off the first line.
So that is one method of debugging using simply the print function available in almost any programming language and kind of scattering it uh, across our code base. Now I have shown like seven layers of how to use these debug statements. Now, which one to use? Well, it's not necessary that we have to use the final one using a library and uh, then using a header file. It all depends on how complex our code base is and also how many developers or programmers are contributing to that code base. As the complexity and the number of people increases, I would prefer to add in a library to make it easier to toggle on and off that debug flag. Now there is a second method of debugging as well, and that is using a debugger. Now for a typical front-end web development, a browser dev tool such as the one found in Chrome can be used. And this really offers you a lot of functionalities, for example, stepping through the code via breakpoints or even watching some variables stepping in, stepping out. In terms of firmware development, we can use GDB and Open OCD. And they also have very, very similar features such as stepping through the code, setting breakpoints or watch points. Now, in terms of Arduino IDE, there is uh, an upcoming Arduino Pro IDE. And apparently, they will also have the debugger feature, which will enable us to set breakpoints, view tray, step through the execution. So debugging, whether we use the print statements or using a debugger, or maybe sometimes we use both at the same time, it doesn't matter. No matter what it is, it's far more important that as a developer, we find it easier to begin debugging than not debugging at all. Like what Mutz, the founder of Ruby programming said, he invented the Ruby programming for developer happiness. So that's what I tend to see debugging as because it takes up so much of our engineering time that debugging should indeed be a developer happiness tool. So thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one.